Okay, Blackmagic Design Web Presenter. This product was announced, launched, and received here at my very office a couple of weeks ago. I've been having a bit of a play with it, and this video is for you. It's about everything you might need to know about the product. Thing number one that you will need to know, it does not come with a power supply. It's the power lead, not the supply. The supply is now built in. Items usually come with something like that, a transformer. They don't need to now, they come with a kettle lead. That is a kettle lead. This video here is recorded on it. I'll give you a bit, bit of a tour of the setup that we've got. So, what the Blackmagic web presenter does, in case you don't know, is it takes either a feed from a vision mixer or direct from a camera such as this, or such as you there, and it converts it into a, well, down a USB stream into a webcam feed. That webcam feed will turn up on a screen there, an infinitum, and then from therein we can do things like Skype, send it to OBS, which is what we've got here, uh, Split Broadcaster, uh, well, let's have a look down the list there, Livestream, Skype, Twitch, Periscope, Facebook Live, Wirecast, you get the idea, it's for streaming online. It does that at 720p, before you jump to the comment section we'll have a look at how good that is in a bit. Again, this is recorded directly via OBS, so you can test the quality out. And a bit later on, we'll switch to another quality that we're recording as well. So, first off, I will go through the setup. This will explain most of the things that you might need to know. So, there is the web presenter. That's it. It is about a bit wider than the hand. Well, it's a third of a normal rack size. So, you can see what we're seeing on the screen now and some audio meters on the front. This panel here is extra. This is the Terranex Smart Panel, and we'll talk about what that means in a minute. But it's well worth having. It's not a lot of money. Invest in that. You'll want that. So, round the back, well, the top of it is something like that. It has a number of different plugs on the back, and you should be able to see we have power here. We have a USB 2. This is plugged into the iMac and will be the way that the video stream comes out of the web presenter back into a computer to be a webcam. We've got HDMI in. So the camera that you're looking at now is an SDI in camera and the other camera that you saw just, which is, that's you, is HDMI. Uh, the camera that I'm currently using is an HDMI camera, but we've got that going into a Blackmagic converter there with the purple cable, which is the SDI feed out, ending up down the bottom there. This SDI cable is another way that we're recording. So this is a program out from this particular unit, and it ends up down here into a box that looks very similar. However, it's not similar. This is the Hyperdeck Studio Mini, also a brand new product. But that's enough of that for now. And finally, we've got an audio input here. So that runs all the way around its cable back to the G3 radio mic, which is in turn clipped up to me here. So that's basically the setup that we are using here. And, well, judge for yourself how well it works. Now, as I put this video out, we will have corrected any of the issues that we see along the way, but I will spot them out for you. One of them that we've found so far, which I'll talk about straight away, is an audio sync issue. I've looked online, and well, there seems to be one other person who's really experiencing this. I don't know if this is a bug, but I'm down at BVE on Tuesday, so I'm going to find this out. But the audio looks a bit like this. That bothers me, and in OBS, you can fix that with an audio delay. But if you were streaming directly to... Um, well, whatever you might be streaming to, there is no way in the unit to set the audio delay. The way the web presenter works is it will combine all of the different audio feeds. Feeding into this, let's take a look. As mentioned, the G3, audio coming in from the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera. Now, for the purposes of this, I've disabled the audio altogether for there. The purple cable, which is the camera we are currently using. This one. All of the audio feeds just get merged together. But it is worth saying that the, that the the G3 inputs that I've used, I've actually had to do something I've never done before, which is turn the output gain up on this 
to plus 12 for it even to register. And what I would have liked to have done was to disable, well, I've disabled you. I can't, can't disable the sound on this one, but I'm going to find another camera to do that with because I'm not very pleased with the sound that it's pumping out. I would like to see a little bit more control, maybe even other functions on the Taranex smart panel to be unlocked, such as the volume control, or the, the round knob on the front becoming volume control, the audio button particularly being switched on. So, we're all rigged up, there is the panel, and this panel you can see gives us which source we're currently looking at, which is currently SDI. It tells us the format that the video, the camera is pumping out, which in this case is 1080i50, and what it's sending down the USB line, which is 30 frames. Incidentally, it always sends 30 frames down. You can't, I can't change that to 25, which is what I would want in this region. However, it does a pretty good job of dealing with it. Um, audio meters you can also see are there, and there's a bunch of buttons here. These buttons on various different devices do different things. On this particular device, it switches. So you'll see now, we want to see another camera where I'm not paying very much attention, and we'll come back to there, and we can see that camera. This ability to switch between two cameras is really useful. It makes this tiny little device into a powerful two-channel switcher. As we said a little bit earlier, we're streaming this whole thing over to the iMac here, which is there on OBS. So we can see that well, we can see the whole output of camera one. That works quite well. What is worth saying that to get this set up, aside from plugging everything in, nothing else was needed. There were no drivers, no software to install. In this case, we've used OBS, but aside from your streaming software, there is no other software. If you have Skype, it'll work straight away. The inputs are, well, this is a bit of a departure for Blackmagic. There is a scaler inside the unit. We've tried this with many different cameras. I have uh, e even this thing, which we've plugged straight into it via HDMI. The unit just sorts it all out and presents a 720p stream regardless of resolution. So you are pumping out 1080p 25. This camera here is pumping out 1080i 50. Another one I tried earlier was at 30 frames. I have tried a standard definition DigiBeta camera, which scaled up to 720p, and that looked really nice, actually. Um, I haven't found anything that I could want to throw at it that it didn't accept. So the Teradex Smart Panel, as we mentioned, will do the switching. None of the other buttons work, but that's really all you need. As I mentioned earlier, we also take the program feed out of the uh, Blackmagic Web Presenter and feed it into the Blackmagic HyperDeck Studio Mini. Now you can see on there it feeds, it's currently feeding out 1080i50 because the current video format on the web presenter input is 1080i50. So let's check this out. Let's hit record. That's recording away nicely. Right up until the moment where, and you guys won't see this, but I will switch to the other camera, which is you. Now this has actually changed the input because as we said earlier, this is 50 frames, uh, the other camera is, this camera is 50 frames, you are 25 frames. Now, there is a bit of an issue whereby if we actually now have a look at what the, what the unit is doing, it's stopped recording. It's now decided that now we've been switched away from whatever the original resolution was, that it stops recording. Now, I'm not sure why it does that, but we know that most of the Black Magic products don't have a scaler in at all. So that's, well, if it does it on that, it'll probably do it on most things. I've tried it on the Video Assist, the same thing happens there. So recording this particular thing, we're recording via OBS itself. Now, the what we have tried with this is Skype, I've tried Facebook Live, we've tried YouTube Live from various different locations, but where we are now, is my home and where we live is in Turnip Land, which is to say our internet speeds are rubbish. We get uh, half a meg upload on a good day. The web presenter copes really well and the way it does that is software driven. So if we use Skype or FaceTime, then the software calls for a different frame rate from the, from the unit itself. And it does that really well. Well, there's no involvement required there. At the moment, as we saw earlier, it's, it's streaming at 30 frames, which is what it will be set to, but it will creep down all the way down to five frames. As it happens, I think the, 
the encoding of this is incredibly efficient, and even with my lacklustre upload at the moment, I was very impressed with the way it coped. Now, aside from this audio sync issue, I find this to work really well, and given a reasonable connection, which, if you're considering live streaming, you must have some sort of reasonable connection in the first instance. This is a very efficient way of doing it. It also conquers a lot of the problems where we've had, we've seen many times where we've tried to upload or do a, a live stream where we dedicated 5 meg uploaded bandwidth and for one reason or another that ends up fluctuating and knocks the stream over. This won't do that, it'll just figure it out itself. That's very cool. As mentioned, the audio issue, the audio issue we will find out about from Blackmagic Design. I assume there will be a software update to help fix that. And before you all jump in the comments box, I will also ask about why it doesn't pump out 1080. Blackmagic Design are not notorious, they're pretty good for the fact that they will keep releasing updates for a product. Will this product be updated for 1080? Um, don't be surprised if I get a woolly answer. It might be NAB that we have to wait, but I'll be there to ask the questions anyway. So forgive the quality of this bit, but as I'm cutting through this, I found one other issue which I want to check out when I'm down at BV on Tuesday. One of the things, the claims that Blackmagic make on the website is about the resyncing of video signals. On every single cut point during this video, that are black frames. Here's a montage of it. That's clearly unacceptable, and I want to find out and get to the bottom of why that is. Let's assume at this stage it's a software or firmware glitch. Anyway, I will report back on that. If there's anything else on the subject that you want to know, do let me know. Thank you again for watching and do check back soon. As said, on Tuesday we will be down at BVE in London having a look at what's going on. It really is a preview to NAB in April. So if there's any questions you have, any thoughts you have, do comment below. I don't, I don't like reading the rants, they're particularly good. That's all for now, thanks for watching. Oh, do hit subscribe.